in the previous slide, we have um, that for a weakly soluble salt like uh, silver iodide, this is going to dissolve into silver plus and I minus. Um, so if we want to create, and we have our KSP expression for this, that's going to equal silver plus times the concentration of I minus. So uh, as we normally do with these problems, the first thing we go to is an ice table to help us figure out how to account for the stoichiometry. So for example, in this problem, um, if we were to create an ice table, the two entries we would have would be silver plus and I minus at the top. And then we would have I, C, and E. And then our concentration um, initially, so when we first, oops, I'm sorry. So when we first dissolve um, the silver, we're going to start with zero molar and zero molar, right? We're going to put the silver, the silver iodide into the solution. And at that point, it hasn't dissolved. Then we're going to start to get a little bit of that in solution. And again, we're going to pull from the stoichiometry. So in this case, the stoichiometry here is 1 and 1. So we put plus 1x and plus 1x. We get that directly from the stoichiometry. So that means that at equilibrium, we're going to have x and x. So already you can see that the setup of this is going to be that KSP is going to equal x squared at equilibrium. So now using this equation, we can either go from the solubility if we know that, which is going to be equal to the concentration of the ions or um, at equilibrium, then we can use this to calculate the KSP. So we can go from solubility, given the concentration of the ions, which is going to be X, to the KSP. Or the other, way, the other way that we could go is if we're given a KSP, we can use the KSP to determine the concentration of the ions by solving the solubility product equation. We would basically take the square root of the KSP, and we'll see that in a second in, in the next video. Um, so uh, we'll have a video on how to do each one of those problems. Now let me show you a little bit more complicated problem and how to set up an ice table for a uh, solubility product where we don't have a one-to-one -one stoichiometry. So if, for example, we were to have calcium phosphate and that dissolves, Calcium phosphate is three calciums and two phosphates. So when this dissolves, we're going to get three calcium two plus aqueous plus two PO4 three minus aqueous in solution. So when we set up our ice table for this and we have our calcium two plus and we have our PO4 three minus, and we write I, C, and E. In this case, again, we're going to start with zero molar and zero molar because um, before we dissolve it, there's not going to be anything in solution. Now, from the change, we have to account. So we're going to get our calcium 3 plus from the stoichiometry. So this is going to be plus 3x. That comes from there. And then this is going to be plus 2x, and that comes from the stoichiometry there. So we know that for every one of the calcium 3 phosphates dissolved, we're going to get three of the, the calcium 2 plus, and we're going to get only two of the PO4 3 minus. So at equilibrium, we're going to get 3x and 2x. So the KSP in this case is going to equal the concentration of calcium uh, 2 plus cubed times the concentra concentration of calcium um, times the concentration of phosphate squared. Um, and we get those again. We get these from the stoichiometry. So um, when we write the KSP for this, the KSP expression for this example, we're going to get um, that we have uh, KSP is equal to 3x cubed, and we're going to have 2x squared, which we can, uh, we, we can work this out to give us um, an expression for KSP. So as you can see, um, as we're doing these expressions and we're writing the KSP equations, we can start to create ice tables um, once we know how to write the uh, KSP expression and we understand what's going on, we can then start to write ice tables for these, um, for these equations. So the next thing we'll do is we'll start to apply these ice tables to a variety of different problems.